Well, hello, it's a Friday night, and I hope you're okay, and I hope everything is going as well as it's supposed to go. Um, I'm just tidying up, because Fridays can be a busy day. For some particular reasons, Friday a busy day, so I'm just tidying up and uh, having a look on the cameras of what we've done. done some different things today. I've also broken some... I've also broken some rules today. Um, I'm just finishing off some of these, which has got nothing to do with TV repair whatsoever. It's, I've got a couple of Sony um, DVD specialist kind of recorders. That were not necessarily specialist, but they're, they're not the run-of-the-mill TV DVD recorders. These are for... Uh, these are duplicating machines, so I do a bit of VHS to DVD and Cine to DVD um, bits from time to time. Um, so that's what they're for, and they've just finished off doing what they're supposed to do. And the other thing I'm just testing here is um, a very nice CD player. Very nice CD player. Um, this is a, a Cambridge, and um, these all suffer from the uh, same thing, which is the um, the pickup gets damaged or it gets dirty, and they don't read CDs anymore. And it's been on test for most of the afternoon, and I just want to stick in one more. Give it one more go to see if it reads. From memory, it does kind of pick up the disc pretty quick now. Yeah, lightning. Um, but that is working now, so the customer will be happy with that. And the other thing that I mentioned, which is kind of breaking my own rules and regulations, you know, we do have a bit of a queuing system. So if you bring a TV in, let's say you bring a TV in at one o'clock this afternoon, or you brought a TV in at one o'clock this afternoon, it doesn't get looked at until, you know, um, it may get looked at in the evening just for a diagnosis. But on a couple of occasions today, we've done a couple of TVs straight away. And the only reason we did that um, is because we couldn't be bothered to go and fetch the TVs out of the spare room. It was just down to timing. Somebody brought a Vestel in just as we'd cleaned the bench down from uh, a job that we'd been doing. And uh, that was just a backlight job, very quick, very easy. It took about 20 minutes. And then somebody brought in a... A Philips. Uh, somebody brought in a Philips um, OLED, which was completely dead. Now, I'll just let you have a look at this. So, as I said, the timing was um, pretty spot on with this TV. It just came in um, just as we'd uh, finished doing something. So, we thought we'd have a quick look. It came in. Uh, the diagnosis was no power. There's the model number 55 POS 900. And two or nine thousand and two, sorry, dash zero five, uh, manufactured May two thousand and eighteen. Um, I'm not surprised. I'm not sure if the Philips logo is supposed to light up or if there is a, um, if there's a separate uh, standby light on the right hand side. I think there is on this one. Um, lots of smudgy prints over the screen. Um, we didn't do that, but we will give it a clean for the customer when he comes back to pick it up. Very impressive circuitry uh, on most OLED TVs. Most OLED TVs are quite similar to the old plasma days. Um, uh, very intricate circuitry. And um, I, I was kind of in love with this power board because most power boards we work on these days um, are for low power units. And uh, this being an OLED, um, uh, the PSU inside this was... Well, it, it, I would say it's probably twice the size as your standard power supply. But there's a good reason for that. It, it is almost two power supplies in one. It's got two bridge rectifiers and um, two main fuses. And I'm just pointing out there um, that uh, a capacitor doesn't look very healthy. So uh, uh, Mike has decided he can sit down and replace that. Both fuses had blown on this, by the way. So there's a couple of fuses on the power board. And... It was just looking like that capacitor, which was a 301 uh, 1kV, but we've upgraded it to a 3kV, but it's still got to be a 3... Uh, no, it was a 101. There we go. It was a, a 101 1kV, uh, but we've replaced it with a 101. You've got to keep that the same. Um, uh, the tuning capacitors, so you can't... Uh, you can go higher in the voltage, and we've gone from 1kV to 3kV, but you've still got to keep it a 101. And it just looks like that that's gone pop and taken out uh, both fuses. So two fuses and a capacitor going in. And we'll test it. And as I'm sure you know from time to time, I mentioned that my old boss Mike turns up. 
and we usually work on different things when we get together. Um, and we have been working on a few different things today, like CD players and clocks, would you believe? Um, I didn't... <laughs> I stopped the cameras rolling when the clock... When we would, it was my kitchen clock. Nothing terribly exciting. Um, so um, Mike decided to do the work on this while I was doing something else. Well, I think I was putting together the Vestel. I think so. Um, so why Mike sorts this out... And then we'll plug it back in and um, and see if it comes back to life. I mean, bearing in mind that it is a four, what, five-year-old? No, six-year-old six year TV. Yeah, almost exactly six-year-old. Um, now, some people will still say it's supposed to last 10, 20 years. I think gone are the days when your modern-day circuit boards are going to last that long without something needed to be changed. Um, we're not talking about capacitors in this day and age, even though sometimes we still might, you know, capacitors do surprises, they still bulge and they still leak, they still have problems. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm not au fait with a modern day power board which has lasted 10 or 15 years, they must be out there somewhere. Uh, anyway, so we've changed the capacitor, uh, we've changed the uh, fuse, so I'm just sticking this back together. Um, and once again, it would ju it just came in at exactly the right time. As you can probably see, we've got the door open. It's a nice sunny day, and somebody dropped this off just as we took uh, the other Vestel, which came in today, um, off the bench. And so um, I put the um, power board back in, and then I put the back back on. I think we tested out then. <laughs>
I did also get the 4K camera out and show, um, shoot a bit of 4K footage. Not that that's going to uh, show up really terribly much over the um, uh, over the screen here, but um, it's quite an impressive picture. Very impressive picture for a Philips, anyway. But it is an OLED, and uh, the picture quality um, I thought was far superior than anything else I've had in the workshop uh, this year. So I'm really pleased that we managed to get this TV back up and running again. Um, needed a bit of a clean afterwards and uh, then the customer came and collected it back and hopefully it will continue to last for a few more years you'd like to think so I know OLEDs do suffer from image um, retention but I'm not seeing it on this one on the LGs that I've had in on my own personal LG it's very prevalent but this one is a nice clear, clear picture and uh, very bright obviously because it's an OLED and it's Philips and it's up and running again and um, then we noticed it had gone six o'clock so it was time for us to go home <laughs> 